In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a raised rock garden. A few years ago, I built this raised bed here for growing seedlings of my rock garden plants. I wanted an area where small plants can be taken care of properly, and I thought this was a suitable area. My nursery is behind me here, and I have water over here, so it's ideal for seedlings. But I've decided to turn it into more of a display garden, and I really like the rock garden design. In case you're wondering, this is peony anomala. It's a species peony that I grew from seed. It's flowering really well this year, and it's time to move it out in the garden. And I'll do that in fall, because fall is a better time to move those things. But back to my rock garden. The soil in here is 50% sand and 50% my native soil, which is about 40% clay. So this soil has a fair amount of nutrients in it because of the clay, but it also drains a lot because of the sand. And I'm just going to leave that as a base and build on top of that. The soil I'm going to use in the upper level is going to be a little different, and we'll get to that in a minute. But before I get constructing this, Let's have a look at my other raised rock garden so you get an idea of where we're heading. I built this garden about seven years ago. You'll notice that the walls here are made out of stone, and I think that looks a lot better than using wood. But it's also a lot more work, especially if you don't have nice stones to use. The walls in the bed we're working on today are made out of wood, and it happens to be there, so I'm going to continue using it. Most of the plants in this bed are seedlings that I've grown over the years. And some are doing really well, and others, well, they just die out and disappear. Some rock garden plants just don't last very long in our climate. So it's a matter of experimenting, finding the ones that do really well and keeping those. The garden I just showed you is my favorite garden in the whole place. I like small plants. I think they look so nice next to the rocks. And since I'm a plant collector, that's a perfect garden for me. That little garden has over 150 different kinds of plants growing in it. There's something flowering almost all year long. And even when they're not flowering, they make those nice cushions that is so characteristic of alpine plants. But you might have noticed that the plants are only the highlight. Around the plants are lots of rocks. And the rocks are just as important as the plants themselves provided you pick the right kind of rocks. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit. The first thing I have to do here is raise the soil up a little bit. It's settled over the years, and some of the soil has been taken out. So I want to raise it up. I could mix the same kind of soil, half garden soil and half sand, but I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to raise this up with pure sand. It's actually a sand gravel mix, very similar to a concrete mix, but it's mostly sand. What that does is gives the plants a very dry place to live, but when the roots get down through the sand, they'll hit this layer here which has clay in it, and the clay adds nutrients to these plants. Remember that alpine plants don't like a lot of nutrients. They grow best with a minimal amount of nutrients. The other thing that's important when you're designing a new garden is to look at it from the perspective of your visitor. Where will the visitor stand to look at this garden? Now that side of it has an arbor, so they can't stand over there. This is the front, so the main viewing area will be this way, from the camera into the garden here. The back has my seedlings. This is a nursery area. I don't let visitors in there, so they're not going to see it from the back side. Really, they're only going to see it from this side. And that's really important when you're designing a new garden. Stand where the visitor will stand and then design it for that view. So one of the things I'm going to do with this garden is I'm going to keep the front a little lower and try and raise the back so we have a slope going up here. That will display the plants better and make the garden a little more interesting. Now it's time to add some sand. I've shoveled the sand twice now, and that loosens it all up. And it's going to compact over time. So I want to speed up that process so I put the rocks at the right height. 
I never recommend this for a normal garden. But when you're doing a raised bed like this, it's a good idea to compact everything and make sure that you have enough soil in here. It's impossible to add soil later on once the rocks are in place. And it's a good thing I'm a heavy guy. Let's talk rocks. When you're selecting your rock, try to pick something that's local. It will look more natural and you're not paying to have it shipped halfway across the country. Try to get different shape rocks. You'll notice that the selection I have here are different sizes, different shapes. This one's nice and long. This one's quite round. This one's flat on top. That variety makes the garden more interesting. Now I'm lucky to have this limestone here. And it's great because it gets this patina on it. And the patina is a combination of lichens and coloration on the rock. We get lots of this black lichen here and some of this red. The stone down here has some moss on it. And some of these mosses will grow just fine in a lot of sun and pretty dry. So I'll make sure I don't knock that off as I'm placing the rock. The other thing you notice that if you look at this rock, it's got nice coloration at the surface. But if I turn it over, it's gray. This is a natural color of limestone. And this side has been sitting on the soil. And so it has nothing growing on there. It's not as interesting. So when you place these in the garden, make sure you have the nice side up. I even look at each rock and decide what is the front and what is the back? What is the best view for this rock? And you'll notice the back is pretty flat here. Kind of boring. The front is much more interesting. So I'll probably place this one like this so the viewer is out there looking at it this way. Now when you're building a project like this, it's good to have extra rocks because I find that I start placing these in the bed and they don't all fit well together and I have to take them out and put another one in. And the more selection I have, the better the final garden will be. So I like to have lots of extra rocks, use the best ones for this project, take the others, put them away for the next project. So let's get some rocks in place. So I'm placing larger rocks at the back, trying to raise this up a little bit. And I'll put sand in at about this height. So I'll make a little raised area in here, a little raised bed inside the raised bed. I like the look of this, but there's not enough sand on it, so we'll move some more sand in. Well, that's a good start. I need a lot more rocks. Well, I've got my rocks in place. I think I'm happy with the design. A couple of things that I like to do is I like to have them overhang the edge. Kind of covers the edge a little bit. Makes the bed look a little bigger. So I think that adds a nice touch. I have spaces in front of the rocks here because a lot of the rock garden plants grow nicely over the top of the bed. So I'll plant things in here that hang down. So eventually this will all be covered. I have a large planting pocket here. Smaller one here, smaller one here, very small one right here. So vary the size of the planting pockets. I more or less have the height from the back to the front. I thought I'd make the, the back higher, but I would need more rocks for that. 
and it probably isn't necessary. I'll just put larger plants at the back. I've tried to turn each rock so the nicest view of the rock face is this way. I think it'll look great once it's planted up. So the next step is to put sand in all the cracks. Particularly in the middle here, I'll build the sand up quite high. Can't do that in the front, it'll just run out. So this area will be left at this height, but this area will go to this height, and back here will go up to this height. Pack it in nice and tight. That way it won't settle quite so much. Remember, this is sand. You don't have to worry about compaction. You only have to worry about compaction in soil that has a lot of clay in it. An old piece of wood works great for this. I finished putting the sand on the rock garden a few days ago, and then I watered it in really well. And then I just let it sit for a few days. That gives time for everything to settle. Now, as I'm watering it in, what happens is that the finer sand gets pulled down and the surface gets covered with lots of little rocks. And that's great. It looks very natural that way. In fact, when I'm finished planting, I usually throw a few extra small rocks on because I'd like the whole surface to be very rocky looking. I don't really want to see a lot of that sand. When I started this project, you probably thought I was using too many rocks. They were just sticking out all over the place. But now that it's covered with sand, a lot of these rocks disappear. You only see the surface of these rocks. Sometimes they stick out a little more, especially along the edge, but in the center they look really good. The sand and gravel is filling all the spaces in here, and it's time to plant. Now a friend of mine was over the other day and brought me some new seedlings, so we're going to put those in this rock garden. I also have a couple that I've been growing for a couple years. This one's flowering, and I'm going to put some of that in this rock garden and some in my other one. See which kind of soil it likes the best. The best time of the year to do this is early in the spring. The plants are just starting to grow. It's nice and cool. If you transplant at that time, it's easy on the plants. But as you know, gardening happens all year long. And I'm sitting here in the middle of June with a new rock garden. And you can plant in the middle of June as well. I'll just keep an eye on it and make sure that everything stays good and watered for a while. By fall, these plants will be fine. Now there's one other topic we need to talk about. These plants have been growing in pretty good soil. This is a peat moss vermiculite mix, and it's really great for the plants. This soil here is mostly sand. If I take this plant out and pot the whole thing in the way it is, the roots are going to be in a mixture of soil. This is peat moss, that's sand. You're going to have this clump of peat moss in there surrounded by sand. That's a recipe for disaster. The peat moss will either stay too wet or maybe the water will wick into the sand and it'll stay too dry. Once the peat moss dries out, it's really hard to wet again. You should never amend a planting hole. Plant in your native soil and get the plant used to your native soil. Now, sand is not a native soil here, but in this garden it is. So we want this plant to grow in sand. Let me show you how we do that. This is the process I go through for all of the plants that go into my rock garden. The soil there is so different than the rest of the garden, and it's very different than the soil I use to raise these seedlings. I want to get them out of this soil. I gently play with the roots and try and knock all of the soil off. I don't get it all. I don't want to do too much damage to the roots, but I do want to get a lot of the soil off. So I take my fingers and I kind of wiggle them inside here. Give it a little shake as I'm going along. You can see lots of the roots now, a little bit of soil in the middle, and I'll leave that because I don't want to damage the roots too much. Form the roots in kind of a cylinder. Just press very gently like this and it's ready to plant. As far as the height goes, I want the plant above the soil. Only this part would be buried. 
Rock garden plants tend to like to be a little higher than many other garden plants, so I'm careful not to bury the crown. Now the other thing I will do with this plant is I'm going to deadhead it. These flowers are sucking moisture out of this plant, and I'm transplanting it at really the wrong time. I mean, it's June. Should have all been done in May. This allows the plant to have a little bit more moisture, and it doesn't lose it in the flowers. It's also not going to try to make seed. There we go. It's ready for planting. Keep the tag with it. Here's one of the small seedlings that I prepared. Try to get a little more soil off the roots here. There, that's pretty good. I try to form the roots into kind of a cylinder so that they go into a hole and some of the roots are as deep as possible. And I think I'm going to plant it right here. Now the soil seems like it's really hard, but it's these stones in here, they're just making it difficult for me to dig. I make a hole that is this deep, and I lay the ceiling in here on the side. I want to see the top of it and make sure that it's not going to be below the soil surface. And then I simply put the soil back, Put a fair amount of pressure on there to settle it good. And that's all there is to planting it. Now I'll water it in well, and I'll keep it watered maybe every two or three days for the next week or so. A lot of that depends on the temperature. If it gets really hot, I'll water more. If it gets a little cooler, I'll water a little less. It's already getting late in the season to plant this, so I'll keep a close eye on it. That's all there is to making a raised rock garden. Now let me show you some of the plants in my established rock garden. Some eye candy to get you really excited about this project. 